So a rock climber stands on the top of a cliff, right? Here's your cliff. It's 50 meters tall. And he throws two stones vertically downward at a gap of one second. All right. And then he observes that they cause a single splash. The initial speed of the first stone was 2.2. How long after the release of the first stone does the second stone hit the water? All right. So let's just identify what we know. We know that x1 equals 50, right? x2 equals 0. We're going to define this as 0 and this is 50, right? And then v1 equals 2.2, right? Of course, v2, we don't know that. And acceleration, we know that. That's negative 9.8. And time, we do not know. So we don't know two variables, right? And actually, we should call these y's, because it's really y equals 0, and y equals 50. That doesn't matter, though. So what I'm going to do is I am going to set this. I'm going to use the first equation, which is, I'll use y's now, y2 equals y1 plus vyt plus 1 half at squared. So what I want to do is I want to figure out how long. I'm going to solve for the time right here. So y2 equals 0 equals 50 plus 2.2t minus 4.9t squared. Now I did that quickly, 9.8, and now I get my calculator. This is a quadratic formula problem, and I'm going to use my solver. If you don't know how to use a solver, I've got a video on how to use different solvers on different calculators. I'm using a TI-84 plus CE edition. I'm going to go math arrow up, numeric solver, and I'm going to type this in, so 50 plus 2.2, I say x here on my calculator, minus 4.9x squared, okay, and I get, I get an answer, by the way, I get t to be 1.8 seconds. So for the first ball, a rock, whatever, it's going to take 1.8 seconds. Got it? Now, the question, the next question is, is what's the gap in between, or how long do I need to, um, the initial speed of the first stone was 2.2. He throws two stones vertically downward. How long after the release of the first stone does the second stone hit the water? So for the second stone, what I have to do, that doesn't look right. I did this, I got four seconds. Of course, 50. Oh, I see what I did wrong. I have an extra squared going on here. All right, so this equals actually 3.4 seconds. 3.43 seconds. I had typed it wrong in my calculator. All right, um, on this one, so that's 3.4 seconds. So in the second rock, right, there's a second rock. It's going to hit at the same time, or it's gonna, if it's going to hit at the same time, then what I want to do is the question that needs to ask, I almost need to ask the question B first. What is the initial speed of the second stone? Because it needs to land in 3.43 seconds, but you release it one second later, right? And so it has to travel downward at 2.43 seconds. Does that make sense? So what I'm going to do is, in the sort of the second case, you know, uh, y1 equals 50, y2 equals 0, v1 equals question mark, right? V2 equals question mark, A is negative 9.8, and T, though, is 2.43 seconds, because you have to travel, and we're now trying to solve for V1, and so it's a little bit of a different problem. We're still going to use the same equation, and then I'll say 0, using this equation here, equals 50 plus V, now we know what T is, 
2.43 plus 1 half times negative 9.8 times 2.43 squared. And I get on my calculator, that's off of the screen, plus 1 half times negative 9.8 times 2.43 squared. So I'll say, go back to me, my cool solver thing. So 50 plus 2.43x minus 4.9 times 2.43 squared. And I've got an extra squared on this. Let's see what it does. Sorry on this, ladies and gentlemen. And I get V. Uh, 1 equal to negative 8.7 meters per second. So that's the answer to B. How long or after the release of the first stone did the second stone hit the water? Well, they said they landed at the same time, right? The he tossed two stones vertically downward. If the initial speed of the first stone was 2.2, then they, they, he, they landed at the same time. So that's at the same time, right? What is the speed of the second stone as it hits the water? So the second stone hits the water, we're solving for V2. Then what you can do simply is do V2 equals uh, V2 squared equals V1 squared plus 2AB. And you know V1 squared, this is this number, 8.7, negative 8.7 squared, plus 2 times A times E. Now watch this, the D is going to be, we're going from 50 to 0, so this will be negative 50, right? And then you'll solve for V2. Watch it, it'll be a square root problem when you're solving that problem. That's how you do question C.